Genesis chapter number 7. And we're going to start reading down in verse number 13. The Bible says, In the selfsame day entered Noah, and Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them, into the ark. They, and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, and every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed, and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits high upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. And all the flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl, and of cattle, and of beast, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life, and of all that was in the dry land died. And every living substance was destroyed, which is upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for this day. Lord, we just thank you again for this church to be able to come to this open door that we have, Lord. Lord, we thank you for those that continue to fight for our freedoms, Lord, that we have this freedom to come here and worship you this morning. Lord, I ask you just help what you've laid upon my heart to preach. Lord, just help me convey it to the people here today the way you gave it to me, Lord, to be a help and a blessing to them, Lord, to be anybody here that's lost, to help them see their need for salvation before it's too late. Lord, help the Christian, Lord, that just may be struggling today. Lord, just help lift them up and give them encouragement. Lord, just help each and every one of us can walk out of here today closer to you than what we was and we came in. And help us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing I want to look at by way of introduction is we just see just strictly Noah's family that it talks about in verse 13. Uh, in verse, uh, yeah, in the verse 13. Noah, Shem, Ham, Japheth, his sons, his wives. We see all this family get on the ark. So they're on the ark, and then we next see uh, the fowl and the animals head to the ark. Uh, now the, the importance of, of this, and that what I really want to look at is, is that fowl and animals and the families, you see all them on, is we see the following that the animals did. And what I mean by that is we see in verse number 15, it says, And they went in unto Noah into the ark. Noah didn't have to go out and gather up all the animals. Yeah, Noah didn't have to go out and, and beg the animals to come with him and lead them in by rope and, and catch all these animals. God sent the animals in. Noah's job was to build the ark. That was it. His job wasn't to gather up the animals. God sent the animals in. What's your job this morning? Too many times we, we spend too much time worrying about doing somebody else's job. Well, pastor, I believe if you would do this, go tell our pastor what to preach next Sunday and see how well that goes over for you. Go to the Sunday school teacher. Well, I believe if you would teach this, I'm sure, Brother, Brother Randy, if, if you and Brother Ray, if you all would mow this way, yeah, I think the grass would grow better. It would do this. We all seem to want to worry about somebody else's job. Just worry about your job. That's all Noah was worried about. Noah built the ark, and he took his family and got in the ark as God had instructed him to do, and God sent the animals in. So we see God sends the animals in, and then we see in verse number 16, the front door, so to speak. And they went in and went in, male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. God shut that door. And we'll see why that's important here in a little bit. We see the floating, though, in verse number 17. It says, And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. Now the opposite then we see is we see, and getting down into verse number 22, and, and the verses up ahead of that is we see the falling away, so to speak. We see the ark now being raised up, the flood waters are increasing upon the earth, and the ark's coming up to flood, and then we know uh, by the accounts here given, everything else that wasn't in the ark died. You ever been to that point in your life where you just feel like you're drowning and everything around you while you see everybody else around you? Man, they just seem to have everything going good for them. Yeah, sure. They just seem to be flying high, just riding high, so to speak. They just seem to be on cloud nine. And everything in your life, it just seems like you're drowning under all the pressures of this world. Now, this sounds pretty easy. They've just trusted God. Sure. Noah and them was in the ark because they just trusted God. Amen. He just trusted this is what God's going to do. God told me to build this ark. He was going to send rain. He was going to send this upon the earth. And he just trusted God that that's what was going to happen. And he built the ark and he got in it. And now here he sits inside that ark. Sure. Now, brother, 
Doug preached a few weeks ago, and you talk about having a big imagination. So do I. I have a big imagination, especially when I get to reading the Bible. I have no idea what happened when Noah was building the ark. But I can just imagine as Noah sitting there and building that ark, and however long it took, and you, you, he's sitting there building it, and you have generations upon generations probably of people walking by making fun of him, Brother Ray. Sure. It had never rained before. Yeah. What, what are you building? What are you talking about? Rain, Noah? You're crazy. And continually making fun of him. And then all of a sudden we see Noah get in, and you see all these, all these animals, and what do you think the thoughts was as the people walking by us now and sudden all these animals are just single fi just getting onto the ark. What in the world's going on? You don't think this kook that we've been making fun of for so long really knows what he's talking about, do you? And all the things that had to be going through their mind, and then the door shuts up. And then I can just picture all the people standing around laughing at Noah up there, man, the, uh, these animals are going to eat you, and, and this is going to happen, and that's going to happen. Amen. And all of a sudden you hear that, you, they feel that first drop. Yeah. What was that? What do you think they did then? I have no idea. Can you imagine them then running to that door, knocking, Noah, let us in. Let us in. Now we understand what you were talking about. Now we get it. Let us in. Sure. But see, it was too late. Sure. Maxwell House has that old uh, saying you used to watch. I remember coffee commercials, good to the last drop. Well, what I want to preach on this morning is they were late with the first drop. Yeah. With that first drop that fell, they were too late. They could have sat, they sat and made fun of Noah for however long. They could have laughed at him. They could have scorned him, whatever it may be. But when that drop fell, they were too late. Amen. Can I tell you this morning, one of these days, we're going to be too late. The first thing that they were too late is they were too late to understand all that was going on. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible tells us all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. This Bible is written as our example. It's written for us to use as an example in our life. It's written for us to give us instructions. Amen. But too many times we sit back and take the easy way out. Well, I don't understand it. Can I say this? I'm gonna get my. I, have, I had no intentions on saying this. I don't remember who I told this this morning. Uh, I just talking to Sister Mary sitting over there. So Caitlin is playing golf today. Um, she's got. She qualified for an all-state event. Uh, it's a, a new two-day tournament they're doing down in Lexington. It was pretty much the best players in the state. This is better players will be there than what will be at the state tournament in three weeks, okay? And Tina asked me last night, she said, do you want me, uh, she goes, what do you think I should do? Should I go to church or go watch Caitlin? I said, well, you do whatever you want to do. I said, you know, if I had a chance, I would go watch her because we're running out of times to watch her. You know, a couple years ago, it's always, there's always next year. There's always next year. And now all of a sudden, there's not next year. There's just next week, and that's it just about. And, uh, but I said all that because Tina asked me, she said, are you, you going to use me as an example? Is that why you don't want me to hear you preach? <laughs> so I'm not using her as an example. What I'm using, though, is Caitlin. Okay, I'm using Caitlin as an example. This but see, we always claim it's too hard to understand. Caitlin right now is taking early college classes, taking anatomy and chemistry. And Caitlin's used to high school. They'll teach them something, they'll give them homework to learn it, and, and, and that, that's how they know they have an understanding, and you take a test over all the stuff you've done in homework. Well, college ain't like that. And no matter how many times we've told her those things, she didn't realize that until about a few weeks ago. And she's fixing to have an anatomy test and a chemistry test. And we're like, do you understand it? Yeah. And then you start covering things, and she has no clue. No idea. Because she just thought, well, I just sit in class and hear the teacher say it, and I think that's good. And not dug deep in the stuff that she has to understand. And then it's like, well, I can't get this. And want to throw her hands up. I'll just, I'll just drop the class, or I'll just do this. Because too many times, that's an easy thing for us to do. Right. Well, I don't understand. I don't understand what this means. Well, have you spent time studying? You realize, and I actually had this in the notes late, later on, but I'll bring it out right now. You're going to be judged out of this book. There is no excuse why I, I, I didn't understand. I was only from, I, I grew up only here, and I only have this amount of education. I didn't understand it, God. No, God will give you the understanding if you want it. That's right. We done preached about and talked about Wednesday night. You'll get what you come for. You will have a desire to understand it. You can understand it. God will illuminate things to you right. if you want to. They were too late to understand. They didn't get it. No matter how much Noah taught or preached or, or just, just sitting there just being faithful to build that ark, they didn't understand until it was too late. 
And I can still picture this. It might just be me and my imagination. I can still picture him digging on that door. Noah, let us in. Sure. And it was too late. Not only were they too late to understand all that was going on, they were too late to have the umbrella of their covering. Romans chapter number 4 and verse 7 saying, saying, Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. We have one today. If you're here this morning lost, there is that one today that will cover your sins. He, he came and he, he lived on this world and he went through a horrible, horrible death and laying down his life sure. for your sins to be covered this morning. Amen. But one of these days, it'll be too late. It'll be too late to have that covering. You're going to get to that point where you're going to uh, always think there's always tomorrow. You know, I had a, a fellow that I used to work with when I worked at Toyota reached out to me. Um, he had shared something on Facebook, I guess probably a couple months ago, and, and, or I guess about a month ago now, and I looked at it and I said, that fellow looks familiar. I said, where did he work at? And he worked with us at Toyota. Caitlin played in a golf tournament about two Saturdays ago, I believe it was, and one of the girls that she played with, they had just had a girl that had just graduated the year before, was involved in an auto accident the night before leaving a football game. It was on life support. And anyway, look, three or four days later, I think it's Tuesday or Wednesday that week following, that girl died. In small world, the fact that I worked with that guy, with that girl, I worked with her dad years ago at Toyota. 18 years old, just graduated, whole life ahead of her. See, we all think, oh, I'll get saved or I'll do this when, when I get ready to, to quit sinning. I quit being in the sinning business, as Brother Phil says. When I get tired of all that, then I'll, one of these days you're going to be too late. These fellows, they were too late. They could have beat on that door all they want. Noah didn't shut the door on them. God did. This church isn't going to shut the door on you if you're here this morning lost. But one of these days, God will. God's the one that controls the very breath that you breathe. They were too late to understand all that was going on. They were too late to have the umbrella of the recovering. They were too late to undo the opening. As I said, as it said in verse number 16, and the Lord shut him in. God shut the door. God made a way for them to get in. And then when God shut the door, it was too late. Matthew chapter number 7 and verse 14, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. See, God has a certain way. You're not going to pray yourself in. You're not going to give enough money. You're not going to do enough good deeds. You're not going to live a good enough life. God made a certain way to get in. And you can't undo that. You can't make up your own way. You can't go around and say, well, I've done this or I've done that. I believe I'll be all right. As I shared last week, that fellow that came up and got saved in a men's service, he talked about the fact that he was a Muslim. He said, but once I got in this book, I realized this was it. This is from a Muslim. And like I said, he was there this morning, praising God. He was having a good time this morning. It was too late to undo that opening. We have a, 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 a brother, uh, uh, Clint, taught in Sunday school this morning, did a wonderful job. That's what I was going to say earlier. Thank you to all those that filled in for those that were gone this morning. But Brother Clint did a wonderful job this morning teaching Sunday school, and he talked about time. And you look at time in the grand scheme of things, we have a, just a very small little part of time. We have a very small little part that we have to partake in this world, and what are you doing with it? We're given a small opening right here to do something for God. As our pastor says all the time, in a hundred years from now, all that's going to matter is what you've done for him. What are you doing for him? See, we can't go back. When our time's up, we don't get to go back and redo it and undo that opening that we have today. We don't get to go back and say, well, uh, you know, if I'd only done this different, if I'd only done that different. Nope, it's too late. It was too late for these people to go back and, and open that door, get Noah to open that door for him. I, I don't know. I, I just put myself in that situation. I can't imagine, Brother Phil, I would have wanted to open the door and let him in. I, I would have, if they're out there and I just, uh, and, and hearing them beat and hearing the cry, I would have wanted to open the door and let him in. But see, it was too late for them. We have a time that we have the doors open. Manual Baptist Church, other churches that are preaching the Word of God, there's a time that they have the doors open. There's a time that you have the opportunity to get in. But at some point... It's going to be too late to undo that opening. One of these days, it's going to be too late to undo the fate. In Genesis chapter number 7, as we already read in verses 21 and 22, 
And it says, And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beast, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life, and all that was in the dry land died. It was too late for them to undo the fate. That was it. This is what was going to happen. Once Noah got on that ark with his family, once all the animals and the fowl, the air, and everything got on that ark, and God closed the door, their fate was sealed. Amen. There comes a time when we're not going to get any more chances. You think about where we are at today. This is our warning. This is, this is our time of Noah building the boat. Jesus has told us that he's gone to prepare a place for us, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Right. Amen. He tells us that. So we know he's coming. Our pastor talks about it when he ends every time he puts out the phone call. Keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. So this is our warning. This is, this is our chance that we have to, to come in and read God's Word and, and, and look at things that can be illuminated to us. This is our warning that one of these days, it's going to be too late. Amen. Christian friend, if you're here today, you're going to be judged, as I said earlier, out of everything that's written in this book. Doesn't matter if you've read it. Doesn't matter if you've studied it. Doesn't matter if you've tried to understand it. You are still going to be judged on everything that is written in this book. Amen. And you go out of this world tomorrow, it's going to be too late. It's too late at that point to do anything different. It's too late to go back and try to live a better life or go back and try to do more or whatever it may be. So there's coming a time, and the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 52, in a moment... In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Sure. That quick. Amen. That quick. Whether Jesus calls us out of here, whether we pass away into eternity, whether Jesus comes back, no matter how it happens, it's happening that quick. The same as it was for these people here, that that first drop, they were too late. That was the end of it. Amen. The same thing is going to happen in our life. We have no idea when that comes. You know, we hear it said all the time. You can go to uh, the graveyard, and it's full of people from, from little babies to... Uh, you have people, as Brother Jerry Allen's father just passed away, uh, over 100 years old. But regardless of how long we live, at some point, it's going to be too late. Yes, sir. Lost. If you're here this morning, at some point, it's going to be too late. You're not going to have that opportunity to get saved again. You pass into eternity, you're not going to have that opportunity again to be saved. These people didn't get another chance. God doesn't stop the rain and say, okay, hang on. Now they've opened their eyes and they see what's going on. Yeah. No, they, get, they had their chance to open their eyes. Sure. They had their chance to realize what was going on. Now it's too late. We have our chance today to open our eyes Amen. and see what's going on. It might be the fact that today you just need to step out on faith and do something for God. I don't know what it may be. Maybe God wants you to preach. Maybe God wants you to teach. Maybe God wants you to, uh, to do something else. So we get so comfortable in our comfortableness. I don't know how to say it. I'm not that smart. But I'm sure there's a better word for it. But that is our problem. We, we, we like to just get in our comfort zone. And this is where I'm good at. Don't bug me. Don't ask me to do anything else. Don't ask me to stand up here and teach or preach, Brother Brian. Don't ask me to sing. Don't ask me to do anything else. Brother Charlie uh, got up here. It was a wonderful job singing on Wednesday night. And he told me, he said, I wasn't nervous until I hit stage. You missed it. He was, it was wonderful. Yeah. He said he wasn't nervous at all until he hit stage. <laughs> he got out of his comfort zone. See, too many times, uh, Brother Clint even talked about how he used to talk about getting nervous, come in just to stand up and sing Amazing Grace, just to lead to singing. How nervous he was to get up here and, and, and teach. Trust me, and, and I, I know just from sitting over here watching, this is a lady that I've heard sing in our church, I don't know, a thousand times. Does a wonderful job. But she was still nervous because I've seen her hand shaking. But I didn't notice until she got done. But see, we, we have too many times we just get in our comfort zone. You know, we, we will sing songs that we know because we're just comfortable with it. We'll do certain things, everything we know. Maybe you just need to step out on faith and do something. Sure. Maybe it's going to that coworker at work or going to that family member, going to whatever and sharing the gospel with them. 
that you just, boy, they just, they, they're not interested. How do you know? Yeah. Maybe it's just time to step out on faith. Because there's coming a time, it's too late. Yeah. You know, I'll never forget Brother Mike Goodson. He come and he told that story about he walked into a church he had never been to before. And I've used this before as an illustration. But he, he, he talked about he'd never been to that church before. And he came in a couple minutes late. And I remember he said he come in and he, he stood there on the front row. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Brother Mike Goodson. And he said that they were singing all fly away. And he said, the Holy Ghost told him, said, you need to run around like a bird and just run around church. I ain't doing that. I don't know any of these people. He said, I'm telling you, you need to run around and flap your arms like a bird and just run around. Dude, Lord, I can't do that. I don't know who any of these people are. And if I'm not mistaken, he said about the second time, he said, no, here come a guy coming across just, just flapping his, eyes, just his arms like a bird, just a holler, and he said, and it just broke out big. And God said, see, that could have been you. See, we're not comfortable doing that. See, he was too late. Once, that, once, once God moved on to that fellow and that guy took that first step out of the pew, it was too late for Brother Mike to have that blessing. Because he was too scared. It might be you just need to step out on faith today. I don't know. Maybe it's just time for you to step up and take control. That's good, brother. See, too many times we sit back and we want to have a pity party and feel sorry for ourselves. Yeah. Woe is me. I can't imagine. This is just me. I'm not, I'm not trying to meddle. I promise I'm not. I just can't imagine you've been in this church the last month that we had Brother Sammy with us talking about the kids and things in St. Lucia. You've had Brother Doug talk about the kids and stuff in St. Lucia. You've had our, our pastor and his family have been to St. Lucia and see what some of those people go through. And we want to complain that we got something bad? Yeah. Really? Hey, yeah. Really? Yeah. Good, Come on. I had to call Tina last night on the way home, asking her, on the way home from work camp, asking her, uh, 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 do you think you're going to go with Caitlin in the morning? What are you going to do so I know where to park in the driveway so I don't have to move this morning? We got too many vehicles. We don't want to have to inconvenience ourselves to get up five minutes earlier to have to move a vehicle out of the way. And we got people in other countries living in shacks, and we want to complain. We want to complain about things. Maybe it's time for you to just step up and take control and say, no, th no, the world's not against me. God's for me, and this is what I need to do, and go on and do something for God before it's too late because there's coming a time it's going to be too late Amen. the last thing maybe it's time just to step into a new life everything was about to change for Noah think about that God told him to get on the ark and he's going to send rain and it's going to rain for so many days and everything, the, water, the earth's going to flood and everything's going to be wiped out and here's what I want you to do. I want you to build an ark, and I want you to take your family, and I want you to take some of the animals, and you're going to go on the boat, and you're going to wait for all this to happen. And they stepped out into a whole new world. Amen. All the people they knew, gone. Yep. Everything that they had knew before, yep. gone. See, sometimes, just like that whole stepping out on faith, God just has something new he wants us to do. I don't know what that may be. It may not be nothing for you here this morning. I have no clue. But see, Noah and them stepped out in a whole new life. Because when we don't, one of these days, it's going to be too late. And that too late isn't, doesn't happen over time. See, we always think, as Brother Clint talked about this morning, we have all kinds of time. I got all the time I need. No, you don't. It's already alluded to. It is really, really starting to sink in that I have a kid going away to college in six months or whatever it may be, less, less than a year now. And see, you always think back before, oh, we got all kinds of time. Yeah. Got all kinds of time. Yeah. Amen. We got this, we got that. that. We'll worry about that later. And then before you know it, it's too late. Yeah. As, 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 as Brother Clint and, and, and uh, uh, Brother Clint and Brother Clint Jr. and Brother Eric, uh, we all talk about deer hunting. This happens to me every year. My brothers will ask, you can go put corn out? Going to get your camera out? Yep, going to get everything out. It is now, what's today's date? September 22nd? I've done nothing. I've done nothing. Deer season's been open for, bow season's been open for three weeks. I've done nothing. See, we always think in April, I've got plenty of time to get to that. 
Got plenty of time. Got all kinds of time to do that. Got all kinds of time to do this for God. Got all time. I was sitting thinking today. I was going to make up uh, uh, new things for the hope ministry. And, and we were going to go out. And before you know it, a whole other month and a half has passed. And what have I done? See, so we always think we have so much time. I'm sure these people in Noah's day seen Noah building that ark. And, and no doubt, probably some of them told their grandkids. You ain't got to worry about it. This guy's been building this boat forever. Right. He don't know what's going on. He's lost his mind. We've been, he's been, I've been passing here for years, and he's been doing the same thing, building this ark, talking about it raining. It's never rained. We don't need an ark. And, and no doubt, that's our mindset. Sure. Everybody keeps talking about it. Jesus is coming soon. I've heard about it since I was this. I was knee-high to a giraffe. I've been hearing her knee-high to a grasshopper, whatever. Yeah. We've been hearing about it forever. It ain't really coming. Oh, yeah, it is. Sure it is. These people thought the same thing. How much you think they beat on that door? That's good, that first drop. See, there's coming a time it's going to be too late. What are you doing today? If you're saved, what are you doing for God? Our pastor, do, do we not believe what our pastor preaches? A hundred years from now, that's all that's going to matter. Right. What we're doing here today, it don't matter. If you're not doing it for God. Sorry, I guess I should say the rest of that. See, all that matters is what we're doing for Him. It isn't about scratching somebody else's back or helping somebody else. What are you doing for God? And pers lost person of fear this morning, there's coming a time it's going to be too late. Amen. And unfortunately, that time is going to be when you wake up in hell like the rich man. Being in torments. Plural with an S. See, we have allowed... Hollywood that Brother Clint even talked a little bit about this morning. We've allowed Hollywood to dumb down hell so much. It's no big deal. And that started a long time ago. I could share something. I remember being in my grandparents' home growing up 25 years ago that just poked fun of hell. You're not going there and having a party. That rich man woke up in hell being in torments, plural, with an S. One of these days you'll wake up there if you're not saved, and it's going to be too late. Abraham, you know, when he woke up, Abraham told him, goes, look, as much as I would want to come to you, we can't. Between us, there's this great gulf fixed, and we can't get to you. It's too late. I wish we could help you. It's, but it's too late. Don't let it be too late this morning. Brother Ray, you come get his song of invitation. Miss Renee, you come. I'll ask you this morning, are you doing what God wants you to do? Because one of these days, it's going to be too late. It was too late for those people there in Noah's day. They finally waited so long that the door was closed on them and it was too late. No matter what it may be this morning, God may have talked to you about doing something else and one of these days that door is going to be closed and it'll be too late. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for this day. Lord, thank you for the message you laid upon my heart. Now just speak to hearts during this invitation. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.